Hey there, I'm Becky Ackerman, and I'm from the Department of Archaeology and the Human Evolution Research Institute at the University of Cape Town in South Africa. And I'm going to talk about um, our institute and human evolution in South Africa generally, and how we're using um, this institute to grow community in the academy and beyond. So as my colleagues and I have demonstrated elsewhere, you know, research into human origins in Africa has a deep history of centering white, um, largely foreign and male researchers, and also of conducting deeply racist practices. In South Africa, the narratives of human evolution, um, you know, they kind of run as, yes, it's a bunch of remarkable discoveries of exceptional white men. Um, you see that kind of narrative in the media, you see it in museums, you see it in school curricula. And as Sheila and I argued, even our origin story itself has been shaped um, by these kinds of dynamics and by a racialized dynamic in particular. So as a re direct result to this, um, there hasn't been significant transformation of our discipline. And I use the word transformation in the way that um, it, people in the States, for example, might use EDI. Um, so it's demographic, but it also has to do with inclusivity and other issues. So these are still largely white spaces. They're still largely white people controlling the research, um, the ones who have the grants, who have the permits, who have lead authorship, who have first authorship. And therefore, those are the people who are shaping our origin story. So this is just a, um, a picture of Robert Broom on the left from the 1930s. And, and some recent high profile papers that have come out of South Africa. And this is a, a picture of um, some field schools uh, that are conducted in South Africa. Again, these are still not entirely, but um, largely white spaces. So within this context, we established the Human Evolution Research Institute, we call it HARI in South Africa. And we have embedded transformation or DEI um, and social responsiveness in our practice right from the beginning, which is an approach that's unique relative, relative to our um, peer institutions around the world. So this is just Harry's mission statement to undertake and coordinate research on the African record of human evolution in an interdisciplinary and international context while prioritizing transformative student body training and the promotion of socially responsible practice in South Africa. So what do we do at Harry? We are growing a community of um, exceptional African human evolution researchers. We are interpreting the South African and beyond South Africa, the African record of our past through this diversity of lenses and engaging communities in socially responsive ways and interrogating our own past practices. These are all kind of wrapped together in our, in our approach. Um, Harry crosses disciplines. So we have biological anthropology or paleoanthropology, and we have geology, we have archaeology. And again, um, in the center of all this is this mission to transform our discipline and to decolonize our discipline. And you know, we're particularly interested again in, in interrogating these sort of historical colonial practices and, and how they've how they've shaped the spaces that we sit in today and how they shape the way that science is practiced is practiced. Um, and shape our scientific narratives. I just want to put a picture up of our current core members. Um, so Harry crosses not just uh, departmental boundaries, but also institutional boundaries because we sit at UCT, but we also, um, we're also partners with Ezeco. So we have, some of our members are at the Ezeco Museum of Natural History in Cape Town. We provide um, support for young women of color and also other Africans through their career stages. We have actively sought and obtained funding to recruit black African women in particular, um, but we have funding for uh, beyond that as well. Um, but we really try to um, try to support African students, actually entirely support African students. So these are some of our, our current or recent uh, students ranging from masters all the way through to postdocs. We have, you know, like all institutions, we have um, 
quite a few research associates internationally, and we try to prioritize um, finding and connecting with African research associates, either in other African countries or in the diaspora. And in addition to the student training, this is the other place where my heart really is right now, and that's in growing African partnerships. You know, I think many of us have um, strong international connections with places in Europe and in America. And you know, when you when you take a close look at some of those connections, I'm part of a European network right now, and it's um, very clear that there's quite a lot of money, but also quite a lot of time and effort that's been put into creating strong networks across Europe, and that really boosts student training and it boosts um, productivity and access to research projects and all of those kinds of things. And we don't have that kind of a network in Africa. So one of the things that we're trying to do at, at Harry is to um, really grow these these African connections and, and make very conscious choices about um, authorship practices that are Africa-centric, um, about uh, growing student co-supervision co together and, and sharing in, in these spaces so that we, be, we create much more of a formalized Af African network so that we, we reap the same kind of benefits that these networks in, for example, Europe um, already have. So we've recently secured some um, short-term funding for from something called a African Engagements Grant for bringing researchers together across Africa on large-scale projects uh, having to do with human origins and, and evolution. And we've also received uh, some of the funding that we've received to support um, Black women. We've also put towards, it's called the Advancing Women Grants. It, we've also put towards field camps for women. This is particular funding um, for African women. Um, and these field camps, you know, we've never really had a problem recruiting students. We have a lot of students at the sort of first, second year level at university, but it's these sort of providing experiences that retain them in the, the short and long term. And so these field camps are, um, are there to develop uh, cohorts of students, to develop uh, comfort with the discipline um, and uh, provide support for these women students as they go forward. Um, we also provide access to field equipment. So we've bought a very large store of field equipment. You know, many people don't have the funding to access this or, or wouldn't even know what to do because they haven't camped before or they don't have never worked with some of this specialist equipment. So sort of no questions asked. We can we just we rent it out um, for free, but people can check it out. Um, and so having both these camps, but also um, all of this other kind of uh, physical support for the students has been really powerful and, and wonderful. Um, we have harassment workshops. Um, within the context of these field camps, again, so the, the women can talk about things that they've maybe had happen and, and start to identify even fairly small, um, you know, minor incidents or bullying and, and really understand what that is and the power they have to, um, to report that or to stand up against it. Like all institutes, we have seminars and workshops and discussions and we engage with media, but what we try to do is to prioritize inclusivity and diversity um, in that and to try and reach out to the broader community as well. So it's not always just academics who are talking in these kinds of spaces. Um, and so also that we're, we are connecting with the broader community. Um, so for example, the picture on the left is of um, Selena Mabuso, who's a he and Kim Tommy were two graduate students who came out and spoke to our graduates, graduate students about what it's like to be black growing up in the paleo sciences and kind of their journey. And then on the right, um, we had a, um, a discussion during the pandemic about language called language matters. So looking at how language, um, not just the words that are used, but translations, the non-existence of certain terms in other languages, how that actually um, can be a barrier to people doing well in sciences or even wanting to go into them. 
And then another interesting thing that we've been doing, um, and I'm sorry, some of this text is cut off, off by the picture of me, but we're, we've looked really hard, you know, we, a governance structure that was top down that had a director and then dip, 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 dip down from that was kind of imposed on us by the university and it doesn't suit the way that we want to be. And so we've, we're in the process now after having lived with that for a while and flipped back and forth in terms of who's directing of really looking at um, global practice in terms of flattening leadership and making leadership more inclusive in order to better you know, suit our goals and our needs. And um, it's been an interesting process of identifying the strengths of individuals and using those strengths to build your leadership structure. And then finally, um, I just wanted to, to end by saying, you know, we, we do a lot of work within the academy in terms of community building within Africa. Um, and obviously we're empowering African researchers, but we're also uh, doing work that has wide effects beyond the academy, both in terms of the research projects of individual students um, and in terms of you know, this relationship and the fact that a lot of us work at Ezeco. Um, so one example of that, because Ezeco is a museum, right, is that we are creating a new decolonized museum exhibit at Ezeco. Um, museums of at Ezeco Museums and it's been collaborative right from the get-go. It's been collaborative among African scientists, museum personnel, artists, elders, community elders, Khoisan communities, indigenous knowledge leaders, on and on and on. Um, and that the experience of producing this exhibit has been this one of building community and also building these connections um, between people who are interested in human origins. Uh, everything from academics through to all these other spaces through to the communities and trying to learn from each other about um, how we take our, how we portray human evolution um, and how we talk about human evolution and our origins um, in a much more um, nuanced and collaborative way and one that really brings everyone's ideas to the table. And so it's been a, a really exciting journey so far. Um, you know, we're, we're really trying to take away this narrative of white male discovery and create something that's that's very, very new, particularly in a South African context, but I think really in, in any context of, of telling the human origin story. Um, so watch this space. It's going to come out in September. It's supposed to open in September of 2023 here in Cape Town. So thank you for that. I know I went over my seven minutes, um, but you know, I, I'm looking forward to the conversation around these issues.